In your car, listen to Newswatch 16 on WKRZ AM 1340. Proud to serve Northeastern and Central Pennsylvania, this is WNEP 16, the news station. Now, Nolan Johannes, Karen Hart. Chief Meteorologist Tom Clark with his backyard forecast and Joe Zone on sports. This is the News Watch 16 update. Good evening. It's all over but the digging out. A blanket of snow covers our area tonight, more than two feet of it in some places. Mother Nature sure packed a wallop with this spring snowstorm of 84. Nevertheless, some people are out on the road tonight making their way through the mush. One good thing, you can keep those studded snow tires on your car an extra week. Our governor extended the March 31st deadline for removing the tires until midnight April 7th. The snow is also doing a number on power lines. Hundreds of people in the Poconos and in Williamsport have been without electricity because of the storm. And if you have any shoveling to do, be careful. The snow is wet and very heavy. And let's talk with Tom Clark in his backyard now to find out what to expect for the rest of this night. Tom? Okay, Nolan, the storm is over for the most part. In the backyard now, it's not even snowing. It has ended. On the ground, uh, close to nine inches has fallen. And temperature-wise, it's a few degrees above freezing now. But by morning, I expect readings to be just a few degrees below freezing. So any slush and water out there now will probably freeze on many highway surfaces uh, for the morning rush hour. Nothing more than intermittent snow flurries between now and 9, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, so hardly any more accumulation uh, will occur. So uh, we've come through it. We've survived. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thanks a lot, Tom. So what about the roads out there tonight? Well, Night Beat reporter Bob Costantini is live somewhere in Luzerne County. How does it look, Bob? Karen, we're standing on Route 115 as it heads out towards Bear Creek, towards the camera there. And as we can see, if we come over here on the road, there aren't too many cars out on the road tonight, wisely so. But if we look on the road, it's got a, a nice thin layer of ice on it. Of course, the snow has stopped, and that's one beneficial aspect of all this, because the plow crews can come out and get ahead of the snow, uh, if, whereas if it kept snowing, of course, they couldn't get ahead of it, and that's what seemed to be the problem here. As we look over this way, we're looking down on Interstate uh, 81, and we can see that that road is basically clear and uh, wet but no real problems there are some roads in the area that do have problems right now we understand interstate 81 between exits 39 and 40 is closed uh, interstate 380 westbound between exits 4 and 5 closed because a jackknife tractor trailer is in the way route 220 the bypass around Tawanda is impassable and route 15 in Lycoming County is said to be terrible right now that's the look on the roads I'm Bob Costantini, live with the Instacamp in Luzerne County. Nolan, Karen? Thank you, Bob. The storm slowed or stopped just about everything, but there are those brave souls who go off no matter what the weather. Newswatch 16's Mark Davis met up with some hearty senior citizens in Pittston. This isn't the kind of weather for people of any age to be out. That is, unless you refuse to let the weather stop you from going where you want. Here at the Senior Citizen Center in Pittston, the snowstorm cut down on the lunch crowd, but it didn't stop lunch from being served. 69-year-old Eva Osternes walked several blocks in the snow to make it to lunch. Nothing stops me from going out in the morning and coming here. I enjoy sitting at the table with the other people instead of staying home and eating alone. 79-year-old Sophie Macheski is another one who never misses. She enjoyed her walk in the snow. It was delightful. It, it's soft. It's not slippery or anything. It was just delightful. I loved it. The others here admit it was a little harder than usual to get here, but it's very much worth it. We got friendship here. We got nice boys here. A bunch of nice boys. One of those nice boys is 71-year-old Joe Busaco, who despite a handicap, made it through the storm. Because I, I have that in me. I just want to keep going. Because if I lay down, I don't want to. While the snowstorm probably slowed most of us down, it didn't slow these people down. The people here took it in stride. As one of the ladies who works here said, nothing about these people surprises me. They're really a bunch of hearty souls. Mark Davis, Newswatch 16, Pittston. 
Some children in our area will have another day tomorrow to play in all that snow. Here are the school cancellations. These schools are closed tomorrow. Lake Lehman District, Hazleton Area District, both public and parochial schools, the Susquehanna Community Schools, the North Pocono District, Weatherly Area High School, the Northwest Area District are all closed tomorrow. Also, Novo Tech buses will be running there. And the Sullivan County School District is closed tomorrow. Now for the school delays for tomorrow. The Old Forge District, two-hour delay, no morning kindergarten. Mid-Valley District, two-hour delay, no morning kindergarten. Same goes for the Wyoming Area District, no morning kindergarten and a two-hour delay. A one-and-a-half-hour delay in the Dallas District, that includes the Gate of Heaven School and no morning kindergarten there. A two-hour delay for the DePaul School in Scranton. And in the Pittston Area, two-hour delay for public and private schools, no morning kindergarten. Any other delays or cancellations, you can tune in to Newswatch 16 this morning at 6.30 with Frank Andrews. It's almost time for more power to the people at PPNL's Susquehanna Nuclear Power Plant near Berwick. This has been the second day of loading fuel rods from a storage pool to the plant's Unit 2 nuclear reactor. These scenes, provided to Newswatch 16 by PPNL, show the first of over 700 fuel assemblies going into the reactor. That'll boil the water. This loading will take 25 days. Then, low power testing of the Unit 2 reactor will get underway. PPNL hopes to have the reactor operating by the end of this year. Let's go out to our favorite snowman, Tom yeah. Park, who's in the snowy backyard. How's it feel out there, Tom? Well, Karen, it doesn't feel too bad, but I think the uh, snowman population has dramatically increased over the past six hours across Pennsylvania. Nine inches will go into the uh, weather record books from this storm system, making it the third biggest spring snowstorm since the turn of the century. Uh, on the ground now in some of the Pocono mountain areas, uh, 25 inches of snow has accumulated. And in some of the mountains above 2,000 feet in Sullivan and Bradford counties, upwards to 30 inches is now on the ground. But it's just about over now, and the temperature has not changed since what it was at uh, 6 o'clock. Let's have a look at it now. And the reading is 34. Humidity 88%, the wind north at 10, and the barometer continues to recover. The high today was 34, the low 31. Normals are 50 and 33. And the record low on this date was mighty cold, set back in 1923. A shot there uh, looking uh, towards Route 81 in Luzerne County. Some snow left over there on the trees, and it's quite deep in places. And there it is there. There's the culprit, a tremendous storm system that wrapped itself up, uh, just crossed over Atlantic City at about noon today, and is now about 250 miles out to sea south of Cape Cod. The coast of New England is being battered tonight with heavy snow and winds up to 50 miles per hour, about an inch an hour now uh, in Boston. A little snow there on the view. Now take a look at the U.S. shot. Uh, now we have a very strong March sun across the southern part of the nation, and there's cold air lingering to the north. Now this produces a very strong north to south temperature gradient across the country in March, and that favors the development of intense storms like the one that came from Texas this week and uh, demolished parts of the East Coast today. Storm system heading out to sea. There is a storm developing out in the west now, but jet stream winds should take it south, well south of Pennsylvania, over the weekend. So we're looking good, folks, over the next uh, two and three days. Now, for the morning rush hour tomorrow, just a few scattered light snow flurries. That's about it. Hardly any additional accumulation between now and daybreak. It will be breezy, a cold breeze, and icy spots on the highways, uh, especially where it's wet now. But uh, allow some extra time in the morning getting to work. Uh, 29 in Tawanda, about 29 in Blakely, 30 in Berwick and Mount Carmel, and the morning low in Williamsport, 30 degrees tomorrow morning. Now, or during the day tomorrow, a, a cold wind still coming around the back side of the storm as it moves further out to sea, up to 18 miles per hour, and the sunshine will break through the low stratus clouds uh, during the afternoon. Get set for that. The glare will be intense, so keep the sunglasses handy. 41 in Avis and Milton, uh, 42 in Stroudsburg, uh, 43 in Pottsville, West Nanakoke, near 40 tomorrow afternoon, and at about 3 o'clock up there in Dimock, Susquehanna County, 37 degrees. Take a look at the health watch on a Friday, reflecting drier air coming in and rising barometric pressures. Resistance to aches and pains average. That's a good sign. Sunrise and sunset tomorrow, 551. 
and 627. Okay, just some flurries tonight into tomorrow morning. Uh, 30 will be the low. No big drop in temperature tonight. Near 40 tomorrow, some sunshine breaking through. Saturday, a beautiful day. Good for skiing. The conditions are excellent. Lots of sunshine, 45. Near 48 on Sunday, still dry. And then partly cloudy on Monday, about 48 degrees. But Karen and Norm, <laughs> I'd like to invite, invite the, the both of you out to the backyard for some good old-fashioned fun, if you know what I mean. I think we'll take you up I on that. I think so. Yeah. Okay. That's a good aim. Look yeah. out. Watch out. Okay, look out. Look out <laughs> Watch there, out. fella. <laughs> Joe Jones up next with the story of an NFL franchise on the move. Plus, a look back at the Northwest season. Williamsport goes after the state championship live Saturday. Well, here's a man a little bit happy tonight. The travel conditions are a little bit better because he'll be live from Hershey tomorrow night at 6. If I could just get my car out of the 16 parking lot <laughs> to get it down there, it'd be okay. We'll, we'll help you. We've been digging all night. That's, and that's why I've got, that's why I'm all wet. One reason I'm all wet. The Northwest Area boys and the Marian Catholic girls left for Hershey earlier today, and I'm assured both teams have arrived and are ready to go for state titles tomorrow afternoon. For the Northwest kids, a second straight shot. You know, they went all the way last year. Tim Carlson looks back at what brought the Rangers this far again. For the past 30-plus seasons, it's been a tradition of winning at Northwest High School under the coaching of Ed Gajewski. That tradition reaching its peak last year with a boys' Class A state title and an undefeated 33-win season. Now for Gajewski and this year's Rangers, it's a matter of doing the job again. During the season, Northwest pretty much had their way with opponents, staying unbeaten until a night in February when Milton High School ended the dreams of another unblemished record. But from there, it's been business as usual, winning and more winning, right to the interdistrict playoffs. The Eastern semifinal against Fleetwood, and winning didn't come easily. The Rangers led by four at half, then proceeded to blow the game open in the third quarter. But a game Fleetwood Club fought back to within one point with 20 seconds to go. That's when Kevin Eustat found an opening to put it away, and the Rangers in the Eastern final. In that one, another close ball game against Morrisville. Northwest coming from 14 down at one point to pull out the victory and head to their second state A title game in as many years. The kids are hoping a win over Cornell from the Pittsburgh area will be the capper in a season that saw Coach Ed Gajewski wrap up win number 700 to become the winningest coach in state history. Tim Carlson, Newswatch 16 Sports. And as I've been telling you, we'll be televising the game tomorrow afternoon beginning at 3.45, that's live, and highlights of the Marian Catholic girls at halftime. And then Saturday night at 8, Williamsport and Erie Prep live and exclusive again here on 16. The fish and game forecast now, and the fish forecast too, not the game forecast, and all kinds of neat peaks if you can just get your truck up there somewhere <laughs> and get on the... To the streams you're Joe, Scranton never gets a minor league baseball franchise. Do the minor leagues start this early also? They wait at least another month. Another month. Another Good month. idea. They'd oh, be right. throwing snowballs instead of right. baseball. Thank right. you, Mr. Okay. Zone. Thanks, News Watch 16 continues in a moment with many happy returns of the season. We'll throw that one your way in just a moment. Well, we were challenged to come outdoors for the end of all this. Believe me, this is coming to you live, and we were very happy to have time to bring you the entire Newswatch 16 update. A little reminder, Karen, tonight, right? What is the reminder? Ooh. The Look reminder, <laughs> any school delays or cancellations, tune right. into Frank Andrews tomorrow morning at 6.30. Right, and there will be some. We are told that right now. In the meantime, this is the first annual, we hope, Newswatch 16 update snowball yeah. fight. Right now, I'm... Okay, you guys. Here it comes. <laughs> 